This is the Italian Citizenship Podcast, hosted by Marco Permunian and Rafael Di Furia. Hello there and welcome to another edition of the Italian Citizenship Podcast, presented by ItalianCitizenshipAssistance.com. Of course, we are back here yet again with Italian attorney Marco Permunian. How are you doing, man? Good, how are you? I'm doing great, thanks. It's great to see you again. Of course, we are back here to talk a little bit more about the goings-on of things here in Italy. Although actually today, maybe not so much the goings-on in Italy, but the representation of Italy abroad. Uh, and some of the services that are available at the consulates around the world, because you have embassies, consulates, and so on. But when you're actually uh, just a regular average person, you will more likely than not be dealing with the consulate, whether it's for citizenship, visas, and so on. But Let's get started, and uh, I'm sure there's maybe a place that you would love to uh, begin with this topic, because there's a lot to talk about. I guess it's probably worthwhile to clarify the difference between a consulate and an embassy, since you mentioned that, because a lot of people, they don't know, you know what a consulate is, what an embassy is, um, where consulates are, um, so... It's worthwhile to clarify that Italian consulates, first of all, they're only abroad. So they're, as you mentioned, the representation of Italy abroad. So they're just located in foreign country and outside of Italy. They're not in Italy. And normally, in specific country, there are several consulates and one embassy. So there's one embassy that is uh, the main entity that represents Italy abroad. It's just for... Um, normally for diplomatic relations, mm -hmm. um, whereas consulates, they actually offer services to people, either Italian citizens or some services are offered to non-Italian citizens. Very interesting. So what would those services be? Maybe let's divide this video into two sections. Um, firstly, the, the services that are offered to non-Italians and then the services that are offered to Italians. So there are a few services that are offered to non-Italian citizens and the rules changed over time. Uh, for instance, right now, the notary services are no longer offered to non-Italian citizens. Uh, so they're only offered to Italian citizens. Interesting. Meaning if you are a foreign citizen and you want to use the uh, public notary within the Italian consulate and, and if you're not an Italian citizen, you can't really do it. And the current regulations say that you have to use a public notary in your home country in the country where you're residing and then you have to legalize whatever document you have to use in italy so in other words if you are an italian citizen you can directly use the uh, services of the public notary that is located within the italian consulate uh, whereas if you are a non-italian citizen you have to um, deal with a public notary in your home country, in the country where you're residing and get the signature of the notary legalized uh, with an apostille if the country in question is part of the Hague Convention on Apostilles and then potentially you may have to translate the document into Italian. For instance, if you're purchasing a property in Italy and you need a power of attorney, you need to give power of attorney to somebody else in Italy to purchase the property for you you can only, if, if you're a non-Italian citizen, you can only sign it before a public notary, say, in the U.S., if you are in the U.S., and then you have to get the signature of the notary apostilled uh, by the Secretary of State, since both Italy and the U.S. are part of the Hague Convention on Apostilles. And then if the document is in English, which is probably the case, it will need to be translated into Italian, and only then you can use the document in Italy uh, or more precisely, your um, agent can use the, the power of attorney in Italy to purchase the property for you. But going back to your question regarding the services that are actually offered to non-Italian citizens by the consulate, and it's, this is also related, for instance, um, to the purchase of a property in Italy. Um, if you need a uh, tax code, an Italian uh, Codice Fiscale, which we said this before, but it's probably worthwhile to just re-say that uh, the fact that you have a tax code doesn't really mean that you have to pay taxes in Italy. It's more a national identification number, uh, which is needed, for example, if you have to purchase a property. And you can apply for one through the Italian consulate, even if you're not 
an Italian citizen. So you can apply for it through the mail and you have to show the reasons why you need it, meaning I have to, for instance, purchase a property and they will give it to you even if you're not an Italian citizen. And uh, sorry, just to take things one step back, you mentioned also about how um, the notary services for the time being, or at least this point in time, aren't available to non-citizens. I'm just curious, is that something that is permanent, that is just how things are, or is this temporary because of the COVID situation? Oh, it's not related to the um, global situation. It, it, the, re the regulations changed uh, a few years ago. Uh, okay. For instance, in the U.S., it was possible to use the uh, Italian or the Republic within the consulate, but a few years ago, uh, the Italian uh, consulates decided that it was no longer a possibility. Uh, fascinating. That's very interesting. Um, so is, are there any other services that are available to non-Italians? Yes. Uh, the visa office is, of course, meant for people who are not Italian citizens mm -hmm. and need to apply for a visa to go to Italy. Right. Um, as we know, if you are an American, you don't really need a visa if you want to just travel to Italy for no longer than 90 days um, at a time. But if you do want to stay in Italy for longer, you will have to apply for a visa and you can do so through the Italian consulate abroad. And there are quite a few people that have asked me over the years, can I apply for a visa from within Italy? So they were already in Italy and as, as tourists and they were like, hey, I, I wanna stay for longer. Right. But unfortunately, in most of the cases, it's not possible to apply for a visa uh, from within Italy. You have to do it through the Italian consulate in the country where you reside, not even in any Italian consulate, but just specifically in the country where you, res where you reside. Uh, for instance, I got a phone call a few weeks ago from an American who was in Spain and he wanted to, he was traveling uh, throughout Spain and he wanted to apply for an Italian visa at the Italian consulate in Spain, but that's not possible if you are not a resident of Spain. So that's very interesting. And I guess moving on, uh, there is a, another category of people that we haven't really taken into consideration here because you have non-Italian citizens and you have Italian citizens, and then you have Schrodinger's Italian <laughs> citizens. They are both Italian and not Italian at the same time. They're Italian enough to be recognized as Italians. However, they haven't already been recognized. Uh, what is the situation for people who haven't yet had their Italian citizenship recognized? Well. The people of Italian descent, they can apply for citizenship through the Italian consulate that has uh, jurisdiction over the state or the area where they reside. So that's another example of services that are offered to people who are um, not yet recognized as Italian citizens. Um, but actually, there are some people that do need to apply for Italian citizenship, so it's not a recognition like it is for people who are of Italian descent. But for example, those people who need to apply for citizenship through marriage, mm -hmm. they do it through the consulate. So that's another example of services that are that are offered to people who are uh, not yet Italian um, citizens. Very interesting. And I think this leads us into our last category of people, which is a, a couple of subcategories that are technically one large category, people who've been recognized as Italian citizens through Yure Sanguinis at a later date, and then also people who've been naturalized as well as people who are citizens from birth who were born in Italy. What are the services that are available to them at the consulates? Well, Italian citizens who reside abroad um, it can be, you know, people born in Italy, like you said, or people who have been recognized as Italian citizens from birth or people who got Italian citizenship through marriage. But anyway, uh, people who are already Italian citizens, um, there are a number of services that are offered exclusively to Italian citizens. Um, probably the most important is the um, ability to apply for an Italian passport. So if you reside abroad, you have to apply for an Italian passport, whether it's expired or whether it's your um, first Italian passport, you have to do it through the consulate. You have to pay the consular fee, and uh, in some cases you'll have to attend an in-person appointment, in some cases you won't, um, and the same applies to your children, so if you have to apply for a passport on behalf of your children, you can only do so through the consulate, uh, 
that has jurisdiction over the the area where you reside. So once again, you can't really use another consulate if you reside in a specific area where there is a consulate that has jurisdiction on that area. Other services that are offered to Italian citizens are, uh, for instance, the ability to vote for the Italian elections through the Italian consulate. So they will send you the papers, the voting papers through the mail, uh, which you can mail back to the consulate and the consulate will make sure that they get to Italy. So that's a service that is offered to Italian citizens that are residing abroad within the consular jurisdiction. Um, And this brings me to my next point, which is the consulate also holds a list of Italian citizens who reside within their specific jurisdiction. When you are an Italian citizen, you are either someone who resides in Italy, so you're registered with the anagrafe of a specific Italian town, or you are somebody who is registered as an Italian citizen residing abroad, uh, which means being registered in a registry which is held by the Italian consulate so they know where you reside, what your address is abroad, so they know that um, they can send you the uh, papers to vote there, for instance, and you technically should inform the consulate of any uh, change in your in your residency address so that they can update the registries and send you, for example, whatever they have to send you at the new address. Being registered with the AIRE also allows you to use their registration service, meaning vital record registration service. Uh, for example, if you have a child abroad, you have to register the birth of your child in Italy in order for your child to become an Italian citizen. And you have to do so through the consulate before your child turns 18. Um, And the way in which you do it is you get your child's birth certificate, you you get an apostille, you translate it into Italian, and you mail it to the consulate along with the necessary forms. And the consulate will take care of sending it to Italy for registration. The same goes for your marriage record or for your divorce records. Or if somebody passes away in your family who is an Italian citizen, you're supposed to send the death certificate to the consulate, again, for uh, registration, in order for it to be registered in Italy. Very interesting. And I think maybe just one last topic, uh, unless there's anything else we've missed, which I don't think we have. uh, I think there's something that's worth kind of quickly mentioning that sometimes in this world, there are emergency situations. And as we've seen over the past year or so, uh, there were some situations, emergency situations uh, that Italian citizens needed to contact the Italian consulate. I know in some situations, if it is a very dire emergency and there's no representation of the Italian uh, government, there's no consulate or uh, they've already been evacuated, it may be possible for an Italian to go through the representation of another EU member state in that area. Maybe do you wanna just quickly talk about that for a second? Yes, Italian consulates offer emergency services to Italian citizens who are abroad. For example, evacuation services and as you just mentioned, you can use a consulate of another state who is member of the EU if there is no representation of Italy in that specific country or if, uh, for whatever reason it can't be used. And Italian consulates abroad, they played a major role uh, during the uh, initial COVID outbreak. There were people you know, in China that were uh, evacuated by the Italian consulate abroad in China, who was working together with other European consulates uh, in China and across Europe. But talking about like a more normal situation, um, the consulate, for example, is also available to help Italian citizens in other types of emergency situations. For example, if they lost their Italian passport while traveling abroad, if they need uh, urgently another passport reissued because they lost it, uh, the Italian consulate, of course, offers... Um, those kind of services too. Fantastic that uh, no matter where you are, if you're an Italian, it sounds like you can be taken care of uh, regardless if it's an emergency or not an emergency. So I think that's a great place also to end off this episode. So thank you so much, Marco, for making yourself available for another episode of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. 
But if anybody's needing help with the Italian citizenship process, how can they get in contact with you and your team? People can contact us through our website, italiancitizenshipassistance.com. Uh, there's our phone number there, our email, or they can use the contact form on the website. Absolutely fantastic. And of course, if you're interested in more information like this, be sure you're subscribed to this YouTube channel or to the audio podcast that you can find on your favorite podcasting player of choice. Or if you're interested in more info about life in Italy, living in Italy, and living in Italy as an Italian dual citizen expat, be sure to come over to my YouTube channel and my podcast, Not Your Average Globetrotter, or you can find me on YouTube through my name, Rafael Di Furia, where I talk a lot about these subjects, as well as show you some of this beautiful country that we both happen to call home. And of course, thank you so much for joining us for another episode of the Italian Citizenship Podcast. Stay safe, stay healthy, and we'll see you all next time. Later. Thank you.